Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. My name's uh, Chris Rushing, and uh, I'm here to talk to you a brief history of the iPhones. The first iPhone was released in 2007. It had uh, one meg 128 megabyte of EV RAM. The first model was released with a 4 gig, and then later upgraded to 4 or 8. The operating system was OS X, which later was named iOS. Features include camera with no video, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and USB port. Got a short little video. product comes along that changes everything and Apple has been well first of all one's very fortunate if you get to work on just one of these in your career Apple's been very fortunate it's been able to introduce a few of these into the world In 1984 we introduced the Macintosh it didn't just change Apple, it changed the whole computer industry. In 2001, we introduced the first iPhone. And it didn't just, it didn't just change the way we all listen to music, it changed the entire music industry. Well, today, we're introducing three revolutionary products of this class. The first one is a widescreen iPod with touch controls. The second is a revolutionary And the third is a breakthrough internet communications device. So, three things. A widescreen iPod with touch controls, a revolutionary mobile phone, and a breakthrough internet communication device. An iPod, a phone, and an internet communicator. An iPod, a phone. Three separate devices. This is one device. And we are calling it iPhone. Today, today Apple is going to reinvent the phone. There it is. There we go, right there. And to unlock the phone, I just take my finger and slide it across. Boom. And this is the home screen of iPhone, right here. This is uh, what the 2Gs looked like when it first came out. So different than what we have today. The iPhone 3G was produced in 2008. Had some camera, had same camera as iPhone 2G with no recording. 
The purpose for it is support the assisted GPS, 3G data, and tri-band UMTS and HSBPA. It also had the 128 megabyte DD RAM. Ran on Apple iOS, but when 4.3 was introduced, it did not support the iPhone 3G. It either came in black or white. And then in 2009, the iPhone 3GS was released. Faster than the iPhone 3G. The S referring to the speed because it was so much faster. Better camera, voice control, multi-touch display. Over a million phones were sold within the first week of its release. Only downfall is it had a plastic back. And then the iPhone 4 and the 4S were released in 2007 or 2011. iPhone was also introduced in 2012, not mistaken. And in 2013, FaceTime was introduced. The iPhone 4 was a 720p resolution and the iPhone 4S was 1080p. Siri was also introduced on the iPhone 4S iPhone 4 was the first to have a glass back with a metal ring around the phone to serve as an antenna. You guys also know what happened the day after the 4S was released? Anybody? Steve Jobs actually died the next day. There's a see comparison between the 4 and the 4S. Not really much of a difference, just a little bit of speed. And then the 5, C5 and the 5S was released in 2012. Originally came with a plastic case, but was later changed to metal. Came with a fingerprint scanner, featured a 1.3 gigahertz dual core processor and 1 gig of RAM. It had a 4 inch screen, which is about a half an inch bigger than the iPhone 4. Not much of a difference. And then the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus came out. If you want. It was released in 2014. The iPhone 6 is a 4.7 inch and the 6 Plus is a 5.5. So there's a greater difference in the new 6 and the 6 Plus, but still not a whole lot. It's actually the thinnest phone ever released by iPhone. It came with a 64 bit structure and a Retina HD display. And uh, here you can see the difference between the first iPhone all the way to the 5 or 6 Plus. You can see a big difference from the first one to the very last one. They increased the size and the style quite differently. I got another short little video on the. Hey guys, everything Apple Pro here. In this video, I'm bringing you a comparison of 10 iPhones. That's right, 10 iPhones from the newest iPhone 6 Plus, iPhone 6 down to the 5S, 5C, 5, 4S, 4, 3GS, 3G, and 2G. So this is every iPhone ever made. And I just want to show you how far Apple has progressed from the original iPhone 2G all the way to the newest 6 and 6 Plus. You may be surprised, every generation we see a little bit of a change, not something big, but over time we can look back you know, through tests like these and actually see how far Apple has managed to progress. Now I've already done this twice and it's really interesting to see how all of these iPhones stack up against each other in these tests. And it's not getting any easier. You know, with every iPhone release, that mount just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And I do need help, of course, so I do apologize for the number of hands in this video. But the first test we're going to do is a shutdown. In this test, I notice there isn't much of a difference. Most of these devices now turn off, you know, almost instantaneously, especially the newer devices on iOS 8. Now, it gets really interesting during the boot up test. And take note, the further right we go with these phones, the weaker they are. And it might surprise you which one boots up first. So there are a couple factors to consider. You know, the newer the operating system, the more features it has to boot. However, the older the device, the weaker it is. So that makes a really interesting mix when doing the startup test. All these devices have been freshly restored on their newest firmware. So first place isn't the 6 or 6 Plus, it's the iPhone 5S, quickly followed by the iPhone 6, and then the 6 Plus, then the 5C, then narrowly the iPhone 2G, then the 5, then the iPhone 4S, 3GS, 
and it's going to be a while, but eventually the iPhone 3G beats the iPhone 4. So iPhone 4 is in last place. Why is that? Well, I think that's because Apple decided not to give up on the device. They wanted to give it iOS 7, even though it was a little bit beyond its hardware limitation. Now, this isn't much in terms of a hardware test, so let's go ahead and run a Geekbench to let you guys know how these devices actually compare to each other in terms of raw processing power. Unfortunately, the 3G and 2G don't support the application, and even if they did, I feel like I'd grow old before the application actually finished running the test. On the 3G, it literally took over 15 minutes, whereas on the 6 Plus, it was under a minute. And if you take a look at the actual specs I placed above these devices, you'll notice that you know it's pretty low. In comparison to many Android phones, even the older iPhones, you'll notice Apple hasn't made many huge leaps and bounds in terms of adding a lot of gigahertz and RAM to their devices, and that's for a very good reason because Apple has always been great at optimizing their devices to run the latest stuff, the best graphic applications, stuff like that, without needing a lot of raw power. Just really good system optimization. Nothing surprising in the Geekbench results. You know, we do see a slight increase in power for every single generation. Next, we're going to load reddit.com and the newer devices, they load it almost instantaneously thanks to the new JavaScript engine. And as you can see, they just go down one by one from the 6 Plus all the way down to the 2G. And the 2G is out of Wi-Fi, so you can't load it. But, you know, they do load it in order one by one. And here we can see that the newer devices do get the better JavaScript engine. So they will load web pages a little bit better also thanks to preloading. And as you guys can see, it's kind of surprising to see some of the older devices perform better than the newer ones, say, the startup test. But Apple has been making steady progress from the very first 2G all the way to the newest 6 Plus in streamlining, making them a little bit faster every single generation. And I personally don't see a reason that you jump from a 5S to a new 6 or 6 Plus just based on a little bit of an extra speed boost because as you guys can see, they work so good as it is. It's just a very marginal difference between every single generation, but of course it is getting better. And it's good to see in retrospect how much Apple has improved from the original iPhone 2G. I would have my presentation. Hey Chris, did they dedicate the S4 to him? Yeah, I think so. Away? That's what I thought. So I'm going to go with that. So what's next? Who knows? Why don't you supposed to hack in by that? I could, I would. <laughs> 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 